I love rainy days. They're good days for art projects. Actually, any day is a good day for an art project. I'm Barbara Wagon, and I'm with the Caring Arts Foundation. Caring Arts provides music and art programming to hospitals and cancer patient support communities throughout Chicagoland. During this pandemic, we're actually creating these videos and doing some Zoom conferencing classes instead. Uh, and we have many videos on YouTube that I hope you'll check out, both for art projects and with music. Uh, so please feel free to check out all of them. Today we're going to do Paisley projects. I'm actually going to show you how to take the ancient designs of Paisley and apply them to uh, your own art and you can create uh, some very cool things. Paisley's been around for a long, long time. It actually originated in ancient Persia. Uh, many of us have been using these bandanas for uh, our face masks during the pandemic. And if you've never uh, noticed, uh, there is a Paisley design on these traditional bandanas. It's been uh, used for many, many years. Uh, Paisley's used for all kinds of fabrics um, and beautiful clothing designs. I actually have a paisley design on this pillow that I usually have in my living room. So today I'm going to show you how to take paisley elements and create your own designs. Paisley originated in ancient Persia and India and it followed the silk routes west and became very popular during the 19th century in Europe. Uh, at that time, the Bohemian movement um, picked up those designs that were created in textiles in a Scottish town called Paisley, which is where the name comes from. The town of Paisley became very famous for creating these beautiful shawl fabrics, and they were called cashmere shawls that the ladies wore at that time. The design became known as Paisley since then. So that's what we've called it ever since. The Beatles traveled east during their early days and incorporated many eastern influences into their music, but they also brought back Paisley designs again, and those became incorporated into a lot of hippie art in the late 60s and early 70s. Uh, so it's been with us for a long time, and it keeps regenerating. I know the the boho movement right now, boho designs, make use of Paisley quite a bit. So uh, we're continuing the tradition today by incorporating it into our art. There are many, many different ways of creating Paisley designs. You can use just about any kind of color. There's all kinds of ways to create it, but it incorporates a few essential design elements. And as long as you incorporate those, you've got Paisley. Now for today's projects, I'm gonna go show you two projects. Um, and the materials we need are really, really very simple. Uh, for the first project, we're gonna work on white cardstock. So if you have some basic white paper of any kind. Uh, smooth paper probably works the best, but you can use any kind of paper. And for the first project, we're gonna use some Sharpie markers. So you need some Sharpie markers. They can be any color. A selection of colors is good. And uh, also a number 10 pencil. And it's a good idea to have a, a sharpener on hand as well and an eraser. Now I particularly like uh, these kneaded erasers. They're very soft and they pull apart. What I like about them is you can uh, put them into any shape to erase something very small. So I like these kneaded erasers, but any kind of eraser will work fine. Um, and then some colored pencils for the second project. Uh, they can be, again, any color. I have a, a few colors here, but I have a whole selection of them. So any kind of colored pencils you have, Prismacolor pencils are the best if you can afford them. They're kind of pricey, but really basic uh, Crayola color pencils will work just fine. And then I'm going to show you how to make use of a, a black Sharpie instead of an eraser um, on that project. And for the second project, I'm going to work on black paper. Um, now, I really like this Artigan paper which you can get at Michael's or any craft store. It's really nice for drawing. Um, it has a, a very dark finish and it takes colored pencils very nicely. 
But really, you can use, for the second project, any kind of black paper. And in fact, you can do it on white paper just as well. It doesn't really matter. It works just fine on white paper. So to begin, I'm just going to show you the building blocks of Paisley. Paisley has basic elements that it makes use of. And in every Paisley design, no matter how in ornate or simple or elaborate, all of those same elements are in the Paisley design. And the first one is the bow tie. Now this design is uh, essentially a seed pod. Uh, Paisley designs in ancient Persia were very spiritual and very symbolic. So uh, they make use of nature designs and they represent uh, both the spirituality of nature as well as the, the circle of life and fertility. So they're very uh, meaningful as well. Uh, but the basic bota, uh, this kind of seed pod design, is very really essential. And the cool thing is there's so many different ways you can create this. It always has this, this sort of shape. It's almost half of a yin-yang uh, shape. But then uh, the end of it you can do all kinds of different things. You can make uh, a round circle at the end, you can make a spiral at the end, or you can uh, make a fishtail at the end. So there's all kinds of ways to incorporate the bowtie design, and I'll show you more about that. Then the second design is a fan. Uh, and there's many ways of creating a fan. These I'm showing you are very, very simple. They're just the most basic of designs. Uh, but that's another uh, Paisley element. And then the third Paisley element are flowers. And again, any kind of flowers you have in your head will work just fine. Anything from a, a basic daisy to a sort of poppy style flower, uh, they can be round, they can be pointed, they can be uh, very simple or very elaborate, however you want to create a flower, but that's an essential paisley element. And then we need some leaves and vines. Those get incorporated into paisley designs as well. And then the final one, which I don't have right here, but I'll show you when we work on the project, are the seeds. And those are just basically little circles that you can add uh, to your paisley project. And then after you have your uh, basic designs, you embellish them. This is a basic embellishment, but there are many, many, many ways to embellish Paisley designs. There's no such thing as being too decorative with Paisley. Uh, sometimes we worry about overworking our designs and uh, making them too elaborate. Well, that doesn't apply in Paisley. They can be just as simple or just as elaborate as you like. So I'm going to show you um, uh, how to get started. The first project I'm going to work on here is um, a tree of life. And I'm creating a tree of life using basic Paisley designs. So um, now the one thing I do suggest is that you limit your color palette uh, from anywhere you could do anything from two to seven different colors, uh, whether you're using markers or color pencil or a paint, whatever it is, um, I suggest you determine your color palette at the beginning of the project and limit yourself to that. It will make your project appear more cohesive um, and uh, more pleasing to the eye. So that's my suggestion. I personally, for this project, chose three colors. Um, I'm using sharpie markers, but you can use any kind of markers you like. Uh, fine point works well. I've got both the really fine and the basic sharpie here. But the three colors I'm using are a dark brown, red, and I happen to have this lovely copper color metallic sharpie that I liked very much. It adds an interesting um, uh, sheen to the project. Uh, the one thing about these metallic markers is that they're very opaque. So you can't actually draw on top of what you put down on the paper. Uh, Unlike the red, if I put down red, I can do dark or black, uh, dark brown or black on top of that. I can't do that with the, the copper color, so I have to treat that a little bit differently, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. And when I get started, I actually start with uh, my basic number 10 pencil and sort of sketch out my design first. 
And I also like to have a, a separate piece of paper on hand um, that I can use as my test um, and just create some designs and uh, then see if I like them or not and then draw them on my white paper. And then when I'm generally happy with the basic design or the way it's going, I'll start adding my markers. I've started this one and uh, if you can see I've sketched out some uh, pencil lines and then I'm filling them in with my markers. So I'm going to continue to do that. Now the first thing I did was to create my tree um, and to do that I just drew a, a really simple pencil line like that. And then I took my dark brown marker and I followed the line. Now I will tell you, the best way to do a long uh, line like this is to go fairly quickly so it can be really smooth. But some of my pencil shows through and that's where you take your eraser and just erase your pencil line. And then you go on from there. Or you can wait till the very end and erase all your pencil lines. I like to do it as I go along. That way I can kind of see better and see how things are working. Um, so I'm going to put on my glasses because I need those. And by the way, my glass case has a paisley design. Just by coincidence. It's everywhere, really. So um, I've started my tree and I have my different paisley elements. I've got my bota and I've got a few of them here. I've got my my fan flower up here, my fan, and a, a kind of a poppy flower and, and uh, a, a variety of different flower shapes. And you can see I've got my um, leaves and vines and these little circles, if you see them, that are uh, floating around. Those are the seeds. And I like to use seeds to kind of fill in empty spaces. Uh, so I had sketched this out first in pencil and now I'm filling it in. So um, usually I would start with my um, uh, my darkest color which I'm using as an outline, my dark brown. Um, but my next flower that I'm going to do, I'm going to use the, my copper color. And as I said, I can't draw on top of the copper with uh, the dark brown. So I'm going to do this first. So I'm going to create a petal. It's really simple. And then I'm going to go around those with my dark brown. Since I can't draw on top of those with the brown. The copper color just won't take the brown. There we go. And then there's a couple little spaces that I've left that I just take my copper marker again and just sort of touch that up and fill those in. You can, uh, if you want your, your brown line a little bit thicker, you can go over it again. And then I think I'm gonna take my red and I'm going to make some circles going around the outer part. So there, if you can see that. And then you just keep going. You just keep adding elements, keep adding flowers. Um, you keep adding uh, vines and leaves and seeds. I think I'm going to add a vine. Now I haven't drawn this out with the with the pencil. You don't have to draw out everything in advance with the pencil. Um, I'm going to draw a vine here. You can see I just drew a basic line, and then I'm going to add some leaves to that. And it's very simple. You just have little sort of circles coming off the leaves, off the uh, vine part. And there I've got a little vine. So I would uh, continue with this entire flower until it's finished and then um, move on to perhaps the inside of my bota here. I'm going to create a flower inside this bota. The petals are a little different. So 
So you can see the petals that I'm creating there have kind of a petal within a petal, and I'm going to outline those with dark brown. And you just keep going. Um, creating more vines, creating more bochas, creating more flowers, and you um, uh, fill up as much space as you like and make your tree look however you like it to look. So for my next project, um, and I'm going to finish that later, because I could do that for hours. And I'll tell you, one thing I suggest doing is um, start a project and leave it out somewhere uh, so that every time you walk by it, you can add something to it. Uh, sort of like creating puzzles. Sometimes people do puzzles and they leave them out and work on them a little at a time. Um, uh, that, this would be a great project to do that with. And you can just keep adding to it as time goes on. Now again, like I said, I'm using my black Artigain paper for this one. And I have my test piece of paper so I can test out some of the designs. Um, and for this one, I've got uh, some magic, uh, not, sorry, not markers, um, colored pencils. So I've chosen four colors for this particular project. Uh, they're pastels. So I've got a pink, uh, an orange, it's kind of a yellow, really, an orangey yellow, uh, blue, and lilac. And that is going to be my design. And instead of number 10 pencil, because it's black paper, I used a white pencil to sketch it out first. So I've started this design. I have a large bowtie in the middle and a smaller one up here. And then I've got a fan and my flowers and my vines and my seeds are spread all throughout here. And I'm gonna keep going on the outside of this bowtie. So, need my glasses. Um, now, one thing I wanna show you that I've done is I've used the black paper to create the, some of the little lines within the designs, like in this fan. You see the, the black lines going inside? That's actually the black paper. But it's not easy to do that and your pencils need to be really sharp. So another way to do it is just to fill in the whole thing and then use your black marker, uh, a black Sharpie marker to create that. I'm going to show you how that works. I'm going to create another fan here, just using the pink and color it in. And then you take your black marker and draw the lines that you want on the inside and there you go so that works just as well it's a little bit easier and you can have the colors touching you don't have to leave the, the black around it I happen to like the way that looks so I do that um, so I'm going to show you how the next part of this flower works I'm going to continue with my yellow which I started So I have kind of an open petal here, like that. And then I take my pink pencil and draw another petal inside of that. Now you can see I've left my uh, black around the outside of the pink, and I also left my black around the yellow. But if it's not perfect, you can use your black marker and just touch it up. You can take away those white pencil marks um, or you can erase them. Again, uh, I really like the kneaded eraser and that works really well to get into some fine areas. Um, I'm going to add more leaves, more vines. I'm going to put a vine over here just so you can see what I'm doing. sort of a vine. I'm going to color it in. It's kind of a freeform vine here. I'm using my lilac color here. Just like that. You can take your black sharpie 
And perhaps you want some designs on top of that vine, and you can do that very easily. With the black sharpie. Um, and again, just keep going. Maybe add some more seeds. I think I'm going to add a couple seeds on the outside around my flower here. Again, I like to, to use the circle seeds to fill spaces. You want to keep um, making sure you use your four different colors or however many colors you've chosen throughout the whole design. Uh, so it makes it very cohesive. So that's it. That's our project for today. You just take your basic Paisley building blocks, those particular nature elements and then incorporate them into your design and just keep adding and keep going as far as you like. So have fun, put on some good music, and draw away to your heart's content. And we'll see you again soon.